Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to investigate the propagation of the action potential. But before we get there, let's dive in a little bit deeper into the content we left off with during the last video. Specifically, in the previous video, we took a few moments to discuss the components of the neuron, nerve stimuli, the cell membrane, resting membrane potential, along with an early look into the initiation of inaction potential. So picking up where we left off, we discussed the terms depolarization, repolarization, and hyperpolarization. So let's look at what's taking place at the cell membrane when we mention each of these terms. Keep in mind that depolarization is analogous to a term we created called D-negative, which means that the inside of the cell becomes more positive. So looking at the graph to the left, we go from our resting membrane potential, which was negative 70 millivolts, to at least negative 55 millivolts because of a strong enough stimulus. And once this threshold stimulus is reached, we have the opening of sodium gated channels. And these sodium gated channels shown here allow sodium from the outside of the cell to rush into the cell very quickly. And as this sodium enters the cell, it makes it more positive. And again, we call this depolarization and the charge on the inside of the cell begins to approach zero millivolts. Now, as the inside of the cellular membrane becomes more positive and again approaches the value of zero millivolts, it will continue becoming more positive, but it will peak at roughly 30 millivolts. And once the peak is reached, the sodium gated channels close and the potassium channels shown here open, allowing potassium to exit the cell. And having reached this value of 30 millivolts, the inside of the cell membrane begins the process of repolarization, meaning that the inside of the cell becomes more negatively charged. And because the sodium channel remains open until the resting membrane potential is reached, too much potassium may exit the cell, causing a period of hyperpolarization, which means that the inside of the cell may become more negative than it was initially. But this usually levels off and returns to the resting state. Now, as we transition to the propagation of the action potential, let's talk about what this means. It means or refers to the continued travel or transmission of the action potential down the axon to the axon terminal. And as we'll see momentarily, the propagation of an action potential will occur in one of two ways. It will either occur as a continuous conduction pathway or it will follow a saltatory conduction pathway. And if it occurs through the continuous conduction pathway, this is because the neuron's axon is unmyelinated. And if the neuron's axon is myelinated, it will utilize the saltatory conduction pathway. On your screen, the series of boxes that you see is meant to represent segments of a neuron's axon. And because we'll discuss the process of continuous conduction first, we know that this neuron has an unmyelinated axon. So keep in mind that the outside of the cell membrane contains a higher amount of sodium on the outside than it does on the inside. And that is evidenced by what you see on the screen here. Now remember that once the threshold stimulus is reached, sodium channels open and sodium then rapidly enters the cell and this is called depolarization. Next, we'll have a period of repolarization in which the potassium channel opens, allowing potassium to then exit the cell. And so with continuous conduction, once this exchange of ions has occurred within one segment of the neuron, the action potential is strong enough to continue this exchange of ions in the adjacent segment 
of the axon. And this continues in the next adjacent segment of the axon. And again, to the next adjacent segment of the axon, all the way until we reach the end of the axon, which is what we call the axon terminal. The same series of boxes that you see on the screen now will be utilized to describe saltatory conduction along a neuron's axon. And because we're now discussing the process of saltatory conduction, we know that this neuron has a myelinated axon. So for note-taking purposes, myelin is a sheath of insulating tissue that is produced from Schwann cells, which is a type of glial cell. And this myelin sheath usually covers axons that are within the peripheral nervous system. And we're showcasing this with the segments of the axon being filled in with a yellow color. Now, what's unique about the myelin sheath is that it prevents ion movement everywhere but the nodes of Ranvier. And so, as a result, we still have the movement of ions, but the movement of ions would be seen leaping from node to node. And the advantage here is that we have a faster rate of nerve conduction with myelinated axons. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. And if it has, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.